those who master the MT faster, they will get the discount from their partners. So you give your client a 20% discount, and then you give the you get the 50% discount from the supplier, and so you live on on what's left. Just when they started implementing the first solutions, the same is happening right now. Machine uh, translation will soon become translation about translation memories, and there is no way of stopping this because machine translation solutions like the Star Wars are marching on and they will conquer the market eventually. So briefly about the main trends. The machine translation is finally being deployed on a large scale such as Lionbridge and lo localized. They stopped they finally stopped calling it translation and call it post editing now. Hence the demand for the fifty percent supplier discount. Same is happening on the other end. At companies who have those uh, competent localization teams, like game uh, companies who first bought the TMS and now the MT solutions, and now all of their suppliers are doing post editing with a 50 to 60 percent discount. So there's hardly any business left. The margin after the after the MT post editing is usually around 50 percent just for the regular translation but the volume is twice less. The second tendency is that the technology is developing rapidly. Google and Yandex are letting the user to do the settings to customize the product, but nobody wants to do that anymore, or nobody wants to do that in general. You need that, that nerd to sit down and figured out for you. There used to be just one engine that everybody used and tried to, uh, you know, hone the end product. Like, you know, you buy a plane, a, a set for building the plane, but then when you build it, you somehow get a train in the long run. And then you read the manual and it says that you need to use the RASP file to finalize the product. So. Now we're transitioning from one MT solution to the multi-engine one, from the single MT solution to multi-engine one, and use, use different solutions for different language combinations. And this is where the best decisions are apparently made by the Intento company, who managed to boost their sales up to 1.5 or even up to 2 mil million. And they are, the Intento company, they are the largest user of uh, those uh, solutions that are offered by Google, for example. So what they did was connecting different engines to the system and then choosing the most appropriate one that suits the current needs that's called engine routing. Other systems saw that and started to copy this approach, such they are now integrating uh, their systems with machine translation. And it makes your life easier if you have to work with uh, different languages. Finally, a very important factor that determines the entire your entire future is prediction. You need to be able to predict the quality of the machine translation. When you look at the the translated piece, you need to say, okay, this is good enough. The robot can do it. So you need the algorithm to be able to evaluate the process for you because right now it's quite risky. When you, whenever you receive a post-editing task, you never know how much of the actual post-editing you will need to do, what segments will require more attention, and so on. What Memsource did was 
take it, they t they took uh, uh, files translated by the by the translators and then compared it with a machine translation. Other companies that don't have such data or such resources, they try to find alternative solutions. For example, there is a small German company, Melsons, and right now it tests a startup with some settings for machine training in order to understand how it works um, well or not well and or translation.com for example they have a solution for or they develop solution for for confidence course or for the uh, assurance of the quality of translations inside the engines so there's a boom for quality prediction what people don't understand very well from both sides of translators and uh, LSPs that your translation is not only for post editing but also clients use this role uh, your translation for different purposes for example you can you MT could be not used for post editing in order to work uh, with such some content so it could be raw MT for example Microsoft uh, translate has raw MT for internal purposes and it's Microsoft translator is it okay for you is this article is uh, useful for you it has been translated by Microsoft translator so if the quality is bad then they send this raw OMT for post editing. If you have used a bay, you could understand that you could just uh, uh, say word koftachka in Russian or uh, in Ukrainian language. So how, 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 for example, so you just um, type uh, the word koftachka in Ukrainian, but you receive chain, uh, a Chinese translation. So that's like a uh, special engine for such translations. And in eBay, for example, there are different languages, uh, settings, and there are different acronyms there for eBay. And machine translation understands there and uh, translates them correctly. For example, you're a Chinese, you just uh, type your uh, word in Chinese, and, if, uh, and a French person could find this product that you have typed in Chinese. Now, uh, I work actually very, uh, very actively with Chinese markets and I, so I, tr I uh, they have, for example, not, they don't have Facebook, they have another alternative platform and uh, for example about UTIC and they use WeChat. So in order to communicate with Chinese people, I just use WeChat and always press the button translate, translate, translate on Facebook. Yes, oh, there is also a special function. MT has also very um, changed this company. So if you don't know even their languages, you could communicate with them. And the next last moment is that MT is, uh, s is uh, started to being used not for people, for humans, but for machines. Kimarosi uh, just told you yesterday about Suma project, Deutsche Welle, for example, German TV channel and uh, uh, British TV channels, they combined, uh, they cooperated, and they prepared such a platform some, uh, called Soma Project, and it just collects uh, news from 25 countries. So all machines translate this news for Engl into English language, then a robot just uh, takes separate word, extracts separate word, and makes text. For example, Angela Merkel comes to China and s uh, speaks about that it's urgently needed to, uh, to, um, to to lift some sanctions against Russian Federation or to put some sanctions and then the robot translates this uh, news into English language and uh, some put some text like Angela Merkel, Putin, China and so on and so on uh, defines this text in, uh, indicates some articles uh, that uh, are being indexed or not. Together with Mar Angela Merkel, uh, different journalists came uh, from different countries, uh, from different uh, different countries, and all the project uh, processes all this information and makes uh, includes in one database. And one journalist would like to find this information. For example, Turkish uh, journalist gave positive response. Uh, uh, Italians just uh, made fake news. Uh, Hungarian journalist uh, made a positive step uh, just towards Russia and so on and so on. So it could be processed. So maybe our journalists will not write articles in the near future, but it will do robots. And uh, uh, it, this uh, principle could be implemented in different uh, spheres and sectors, for example, in patent sphere, and you would like to protect yourself. Uh, in China, USA, or Korea, you could use MT in order to find 
similar or similar match uh, of patterns in the, according to the topic in these countries. Or if you analyze legislation uh, for legal service, you could monitor legislation of different countries uh, or thanks to MT. For example, there is a law on uh, law uh, uh, on Google in European Union or in China, you say, oh, and you could just uh, monitor, repeat, and analyze it. So by means of these systems, uh, so it's called um, informational retrieval. So those people who understand how to change business of your client by usage of MT, they could just enter the room and even if the client doesn't need translation services uh, maybe because they have already suppliers they could make such a speech uh, such a presentation and get a trust from this client from the very first meeting of course afterwards you should go to a restaurant have uh, uh, drink a lot of wine but you you understand what i mean uh, really do you understand costa yeah do uh, uh, yes costa yes okay great so the next topic is it okay as to the uh, speeds should they be faster or lower faster no okay as to the what you work with tms and cat tool tools Paul Filkin has said already that sdl is uh, the tradas is being updated each year regularly and and there will be something new in the nearest future but what we have actually all cat tools just uh, uh, improve what you are working with editors just uh, improve everything so what so we have a um, brush, to, um, brush to toothbrush but more uh, improved and better one uh, and I think the next three two years there will be th first cut tools uh, made on the basis of uh, artificial intelligence and machine training, uh, but still we don't have such solutions. Uh, Word has um, just developed a new editor, Trados developed new editor. So each year they're a little bit improved, but without great and major insights, uh, major improvements that call huge insights. As to the connectors, who knows what connector means? Please raise your hands. Okay, that's in a nutshell. If you translate a website or electronic mail, you need uh, this information of this website is being downloaded into your kettles automatically, not manually. So then you could translate and then automatically uh, download it into um, cat uh, catalog here, into website or special system. Uh, if you have internet uh, uh, shop and you have uh, Mm, a lot of a lot of positions a lot of a lot of products and you should translate these changes of for different products thousands of products and three or four languages and if you don't have integration it's very difficult to uh, translate three thousand four thousand of products into uh, several uh, languages what has happened during the last few years technological and language companies have uh, de developed their own connectors were well, published on different websites and if you uh, right now go to the uh, um, Adobe XB um, website and it has a special application shop and they are published uh, 22 uh, language translators connectors. So if, for example, someone uh, goes to website or uh, uh, runs website on the Adobe X they, and thinks about how to translate this website, they go into uh, application shop into the, uh, inside the system, write translation, and they have such solution. For example, orange connector, let's use it. And they just press orange connector and then order service from this company. That's like, that's such a great choice for uh, scaling sales uh, sphere. For example, how to do a connector you could uh, choose this one uh, which languages you would like to translate into which you have already and also there are different connectors other connectors and there is a special button inside the site for example to send the language uh, translator to in text company uh, to send translation to in text company which else companies do you have smart link smart link knows how to do it so it's not a new f nothing new for it so we have a lot of connectors all say that they have uh, a lot of connectors if smart link says that uh, 
proclaims, proclaims a lot, uh, uh, but they always don't work. So the third topic, what vendor, what uh, language translation companies do in order to uh, intervene into clients' market? A lot of clients like to speak about technologies. And you need to show high-tech, uh, state-of-the-art technologies that could work. So sales are being done by means of technologies. A person comes to you and says, I would like to just uh, sell you my translations. Please buy them. And you say, I have 50 people uh, like you. But a sales manager comes and says, uh, let me show you new updates state-of-the-art technology and nobody has such technology and the client says of course i would like to look at your trans at your technology so translation companies actually just a nutshell i will tell you about it so they try to somehow mm, create something new something uh personal and to find this base for communication with the client and they try to shut uh, they try to just cover some niches some some market spaces some sectors uh, uh, prior to the same uh, actions of the technological companies for example segmentix company has done and it's quite a big one and it uses uh, mind source uh, services that's why and, and they pr pr de developed their own system where there's but all for ter terminologies and they could put their own images and you could just uh, create more fields and you can combine different fields and it's quite a good solution uh, if in the company there is a terminologist you could say dear terminologist you could install the system produced by us and you will provide an access to the terminology uh, glossary to all employees of your company so if someone is uh, engaged in terminology work you could know uh, this person could know how the system could be used and just be engaged in this use if your terminology if your translators uh, use special database then you could just give an access to the database this is an, another system from very uh, system this is a uh, comp company this is a small company uh, and they did such a great solution and they uh, won a great client of and they uh, from their competitors so they great gr they made great uh, solution you could just define or develop your uh, own component your own system and such Austrian company for example prepared uh, de developed their own system as a sale uh, by uh, through their partner SDL partner, but so SDL is their partner and competitor at the same time. So and they help in sales and they win two million of euro uh, in profit only by in terms of usage of this technology that has been developed. I'm sorry, just I need to drink water. One second, please. So as to the translation, let's go, it's okay, it's, I have finished. Let's go to audio visual translation or to media localization. So meaning translation of doubling and subtitles. What happens in the sphere? In the sphere, we have Netflix. Who uses Netflix among you? So please raise your hands. Okay, that's great. Uh, uh, so home cinema, who uses? Who nothing watches on online cinemas? Please raise your hands. Wow, where am I? It's just time, sir. Somewhere I'm in the field. So Netflix has uh, started to produce uh, series and movies, uh, major uh, part of series because people have a lot of time and they really ready to pay for series. And they started from uh, several billions of dollars of investment and, buy and fi right now they invest around uh, 10 billion of dollars of uh, uh, into series. And uh, all these series should be translated, should be interpreted. That's, so they have started to work with different companies focused on uh, doubling and subtitling uh, and uh, especially with Google for example uh, there was there was a company of 10 million and right now company has increased into uh, 60 million of uh, budget and uh, it happens thanks to Netflix competitors has uh, uh, have analyzed it have analyzed this sector and understood that people are ready to pay five ten dollars for a subscription uh, 
um, and to receive access to such movies and series. I understand that p my colleagues will, uh, I, I think that uh, in the nearest future, people will not uh, uh, watch uh, just online, they will watch only for a subscription. Online movies, online cinema uh, theaters is the future. Disney right now is, being, is cr uh, developing uh, such online cinema. Uh, so companies have grown in in scale and volume, but you need to increase efficiency also. People gained a lot in this uh, sphere, so how they increase efficiency? When you're mm, doing subtitles and this segment has increased uh, greatly for the recent years, so they just uh, use engine speech-to-text uh, in pre-translation, then they just define time codes uh, f with uh, editing system and they don't do it manually uh, from one minute to one minute three seconds uh, uh, one phrase so they do this uh, pre-time coding automatically and then they do capturing so there are, there are a lot of difficult features and some specific problems you can't just uh, disaggregate Mm, some scene into two plans and so on so on so not solution not all solutions are found but still there is automatic press subtitling and the second option that is being done right now is that the tools of older visual translation are just somewhere behind the development of tools of uh, ordering translation so um, and right now in terms of automisa automatization of working process they go uh, with great and uh, wide steps so they improve uh, in managerial aspect uh, these systems significantly. For example, this Bulgarian system, this is a screenshot of Linecraft system. This is not Minecraft, this is Linecraft system. This is very, the most popular system from Netherlands. And uh, it's used by a big uh, Sweden company, BTX. And in, in, in the sphere of doubling and subtitles, uh, great changes have happened. If you have uh, visited in, uh, if you have visited any older visual studio, I have, and I have visited Moscow and Paris studios because it's, and I know exactly how it's difficult. So actors and should come there, different rooms, uh, isolation, and uh, everything. So it's very expensive sphere actually. If you just made uh, bad quality of such. Uh, subtitling on doubling so you need again to um, have premises to invite actors and so on so it's very expensive uh, that's why people right now try to implement home studio system in spite of uh, inviting actors to come to the studio, they try to do doubling uh, at home of the actors. So they just uh, have special equipment for isolation of sound, and then uh, such actor works at home. And for Disney, for example, for cinema, it doesn't suit in terms of quality because they have high level uh, of quality requirements, but in terms of sales manager in audiovisual sphere, uh, the task is to show how difficult the sphere is, how uh, how it should be done, so the premises, the equipment, how it's expensive. So the concept is being changed a little bit for TV because the uh, level of uh, quality requirements is not so high and you could work at home. And this Zudab's instrument, and so the uh, this is the Dubs instrument won lots of awards, and uh, and we uh, in our company we try we even uh, purchased uh, uh, this instrument. I I remember how I met this company in one of the events, and there I asked her how much money do you have? I have results like this, and for three uh, days prior to the results, I have known that their results are very high. Uh, I still blame myself and really blame myself that I didn't come to the, uh, to the uh, uh, market uh, to the market and didn't buy all their shares of this company because I understood that this company has inc would increase significantly on the market and really the shares of this market increased in the price in 50% maybe if I did it if I have done it I would have uh, purchased a, a new apartment already okay what we have at least we have remote interpreting. T 
Have you heard anything about it? Like when you do it, when you do it remotely? You must have heard about speakers in Moscow, right? Well, they turned into this narrow profiled uh, company. They're just selling the interpreting services, not the platform. Whereas in the USA, it is different. If you come to a doctor's appointment, but you don't speak English, the hospital has to provide you with an interpreter and pay for their services. If they don't, or if the interpreter fails to interpret adequately, like it, like in that case with the intoxicado interpretation, they thought it was the guy was overdosed, and but but he uh, uh, and they did a procedure on him which they shouldn't have because he had a different condition. So he sued them and he won. So it's. It's very serious. There has to be an interpreter. But imagine having to book one every time you receive a patient who doesn't speak English. And you would have to pay that interpreter for the day. So this remote interpreting solution is now being widely deployed. When you connect with the interpreter using your iPad or another device and it you could do also sign interpreting and this is a huge industry uh, actually with hundreds of uh, millions in sales so and you need a technology to manage it apparently the screenshot you are seeing is from language worldwide one of the largest suppliers of this service in the world, for example, they have 20,000 placements. So they need to know the interpreters, they need to know their margins, the translation assignments. And in the left, uh, in the bottom left corner you, see, corner, you see the mobile app screenshot. This is how you send assignments to your interpreters, to their mobile phones. So this is what you call uh, the delivery mode is what you actually use to connect with your interpreter to see them. So there's this whole marketplace of the applications available, about 70 to 80 of them, and we actually rated the largest interpreter service suppliers. And they all have apps like that, and they have systems in place to manage those processes. I'm not sure you need that in Ukraine because you barely have any interpreting market. I actually measured it in Russia. It's even smaller than in Finland. They have 5 million population in, fin in Finland and 140 million in Russia. What about Ukraine you, with the 20 million migrants to the EU? No, I'm just kidding. So I don't really see a way for you to make money on it other than if you look at the experience of the American companies, American service providers, and connect to their platforms and then, over, and then offer Ukrainian uh, interpretation to Ukrainian-speaking Americans. You can expect around 50 cents per minute well, maybe up to a dollar if you're lucky, but the average rate is 50 cents, which makes, which roughly makes it 30, which makes it $30 per hour. How is it for Ukraine? Is it an okay rate? Okay, it's an okay rate, fine. So you have this, you can use this opportunity. It's not in every country that you can find such providers, but you will find them in the countries where the, the service provider is obliged to provide the interpreter. It's like, like the US, maybe Japan and Australia also, but that's far away. Now as to the post-editing of machine translation, you have heard about it, right? But most likely you are looking at 
ways to deploy uh, this to increase your margin. But there are people who look at it from a different perspective, such as Unbeable. They raised $32 million in investments, and they are going in another round. And we have scary investors calling our analytics, asking, should we invest in Unbeable? Who are their competi competitors? And things like that. So what they do is this. They machine translate the, ta the text, and then they post-edit it via their platform. They don't even go to editors. You just you prompt users to edit the text using their platform, like maybe correcting a few segments, and you're ready to go. So they offer five to five minute solutions to their clients, 20 maximum. They are deeply integrated with the Zendesk. This is the support system. And this is what they offer. You have this great product, say Windows, or any other product that requires continuous support, like a Mercedes. Mercedes that you buy and something is not functioning properly. So you call the support. If you own a Mercedes and you are in Vietnam, If you, if you come to Vietnam, you need to establish a Vietnamese uh, maintenance and support center. If you go to uh, Sweden, Swedish, and so on. And just the salaries of your, say, Scandinavian expert or German expert would start from $40,000 a year. If we're talking Vietnam, it's 4000 So the un unbeable offers or uh, proposes you to have a center in Vietnam, train the people in the Philippines, for example. You train them and we'll translate for you or interpret for you. If, for example, uh, we will translate for you. If, for example, your Mercedes is not working, we will handle the translation in five minutes. So you don't need that 10,000 staff worldwide. You need you can keep them just in one maintenance center in a, in a certain location, and that will reduce your costs. And it's really difficult to say no to this, especially for large clients who aim at selling effective support services. And so the post-edited machine translation would enable them to do that. So. They are precisely focused like a laser on their support. And they manage to vacuum in the most competent staff, such as Alon, Alon Levy from Amazon and Maxim Khalilov from Booking.com and so on and so forth. They used to be the small company, but now they grew up to 300 people and they are offering the services which the investors are very much interested in. So the learning point for you is that you can do, you can edit the machine, you can edit machine translation so fast that it can change everything. You can make money on it, you can engage investors and then retire like this, like the co-founder of Smartlink did. So it's interesting. Another platform that is growing rapidly is Red.com. They are also Rev.com. They are also using a platform, but they edit not the text, but the sound. You send them a recording. They process it with their uh, engine, recog recognizing agent uh, engine, and then they uh, transcribe it. They just came out of uh, the shadow just last year and turned out they uh, have $21 million of expectations. And this is, of course, a motivation to everyone else. I should say that so far these platforms have not been behaving, but 
the situation might be changing very soon. I'm about to wrap up. I have just five minutes left. So as far as the voice recognition goes, here is another example for you. Zoom Media is a small company working on speech recognition models based in the Netherlands. They are doing it so well that their models are being deployed by Microsoft after the, afterwards. They collect the data, they adjust the engine using the settings, and then they charge the client per minute of the video or the sound that they recognize. They apply it by selling it to the papers, for example, and to other buyers. So Microsoft is a great source of income for them. Another example is from Finland. They sell their engine te technology to, to hospitals, for example. A doctor is dictating the text while they are operating into the recording device, which is then recognized, and you can track the course of the procedure, retrieving the data from the database. You need this to know how your medication works, how the condition progresses. Linksoft makes 1 million euro, is making 1 million euro on this. So what could Intext do? You could have an engine to recognize the text into Ukrainian. You just need enough voice data. So when I say mama, you need the engine to recognize that. And then you could sell it to your parliament. You could sell it to anyone who needs transcri transcribing. It's a separate market. It is still unclear and not completely transparent, but it gives you the opportunity. Are you following, Kirill? You need to set this up as soon as possible, especially since Google and Yandex are offering this already, and then will, and they will be approaching LSPs with this offer. Large vendors, they are looking into the artificial intelligent, intelligence and they are trying to enter different marketplaces, uh, more uh, erotic than translation. They need systems to manage the process, regardless of whether we're talking about transcribing, interpreting, transcreation, multilingual product, whatever. They are trying to create the so-called BPM systems to allow you to manage everything. This is a top secret information. You cannot tell anyone, OK? This is how you train uh, machines. This is how you train your AI. Say so you have. 50,000 pictures of cats and dogs, and you need the engine to recognize, to tell uh, one from the other. So you need to have users to identify cats and dogs. Many, you need to have multiple identifications. Right now, there's hardly any tool that could help you do that, and so those LSPs who are planning to simulate this market, they are trying to create their own tools. They engage as many users as they can to recognize the objects on the image, to help uh, the machine learn. And this is where you should dig for money. Maybe there's probably not as much profit in this as in translation, but if you do this soon enough, you might be able to profit, to make money. Anyone using this, you tell the rest how you, how you do it, okay? 
now China tech. This is the last uh, thing on my list. We all use MemoQ, we use MemSource, but have you heard about Chinese cats and machine translation? Any of you using Chinese software? You are not. Okay, but it's out there and it's coming for us. A lot of Chinese companies have been invested in their training. Uh, their people, they're having their engineers, like m million engineers, a uh, million engineers in China would be just a small would be just a small percentage of the population. But I'm just kidding. Of course, no offense intended. So they are working on the recognition. Uh, issue and this is coming this is going to happen here soon as well i'm flying to china soon to learn more about it because they do have the technology they do have the solution and a lot of what they do is free for example the Gemma cat tool that i saw it was copied from memoq and it's free it, it had about 50,000 users at that time, and may, it could be up to 100 right now. And they call it TransGod. Who wouldn't want to use this? Who wouldn't want to use this translation? So be prepared. It might not be happening today or tomorrow, but it will happen. Visit there. You can visit there. Uh, translation, memory, marketplaces, you could sell your segments. And then you can use it free of charge. You will not have to pay anyone anything because there are free solutions from China. So this is, there's this huge world behind that glass. It's mesmerizing and it's colorful, and I am happy to have the privilege of exploring it. And here's the confession that I wanted to make. You don't need any of that. Just use your cat, maybe the memo queue, to translate what you need. Use Stratus, and you will be fine. I'm not sure. I, I don't think anything will change dramatically unless the Chinese come. Thank you. Any questions to Kostya? I just spoke about the technologies because I was asked to. Could I go in Ukrainian? I don't know. You could try. I understand. No, no, sorry. I don't understand. Okay, I'll try to speak Russian. I keep asking people about blockchain in translation. Blockchain technologies. Okay. Well, that's uh, really there is no company that has been successful in this they are trying to raise investments but so far it's just profanation there was someone in croatia i think or elsewhere but i know that investors have looked at it but then decided to just let it go why because there's no point there's no problem that the, that the blockchain technologies would help you address. You can be a hero. You can go. F you can go for blockchain, but then nobody will give you money, and then nobody will will give you money. What about Jimo? If they are free, what's the point? Altruistic an altruistic company no china is the largest creditor today for the poor countries they actually gave out a lot of 
loans to other countries, and they know that they will never get them back. And you know why? Why? They want to conquer us? Yes, they want you to become their credit junkie. And then they will convert all those credits and loans into their political preferences and so on. And what do you think the cat, get, cat tool gets from you? The text, the data. That's right. That's your answer. So you think they will be using this data for their own purposes to train their machines? Of course, they can train their engines better. Chinese people understand much better in artificial intelligence than others. Americans, for example, even try to look deeply uh, in uh, technologies. Europe is the top one, is the leader in technology. So they just we have MemSource, MemQ, and uh, Tradas in, in Germany. And Germany actually is the leader in linguistic technologies uh, inside the Europe. But, um, uh, also, if we just train the models, but we don't have in Europe Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all of them are Americans, so by doing them are Chinese ones without searchers uh, and access to big data and, and big data models, Europe will go uh, behind, behind, so and uh, so Americans know how to sail and to know how to work with AE, but Chinese are much better in AI, but are not so good in sales. So if they, when they conquer, not now, but later. Thank you very much, Costa. It was very fun and interesting. Guys, tell me please one thing, how much money is just defined for my head? Should I someone speak race? It's more a question to Stas Bogdan. Bogdanov. But he's not out, he's not here right now. He couldn't look at your face. Kostya? This is a Stas Kolonikov. That's a question. You didn't drive to us. Okay, la, okay. Uh, I thought that you have never. Oh, pardon me. I, I I explained why I could I couldn't come here actually. So, Chinese China. That's why you've mentioned China. Okay. So please, just because you didn't come, uh, speak about recommendations for a unique conference. So you know, I know that you visit a lot of conferences right now, like 10 per year. It was earlier. Now I have each week, uh, I have, I visit each conference per week. So for example, just uh, last week I was invited to SDL. So right now it's about 25 conferences per year. So you're doing everything great, but it's very difficult in, in terms of logistics. So qual uh, the level of qual quality of uh, this conference is great. I just look at these photos, how they admire this conference, how they adore it, and I'm really glad to see it. So, and the topics, the topics should be uh, changed. So the translation is not such a sexual topic. Actually, we could move further. And we need to shift to the topics that only uh, appear on the market that only start its, uh, their role for which there is no professional uh, society community we should just uh, stand for these topics if your organizational skills for uh, tend for more huge topics and you invite just uh, global leaders to speak on your conference. For example, you have uh, in, in Lisbon, you have a small text, small, so called small conference, 200,000 of participants and stalls. Uh, define the topics, stand for the topics, stand for the new topics, for the translation topics, and invite the flagman, uh, f the leaders of the speakers come here. And then the Nipro International Conference will be much higher than uh, Kiev Conference. On the uh, on this meteorite base, you could just establish your own conference center for also launching space shuttles. So the tasks are clear. Thank you, Costa. Just don't stop, go further. Is it all? Yes, I think that's all. Thank you very much. Bye.